talk about some of these different hats that, that you wear. I understand that you used to be a New York State trooper, uh, that, but now you, uh, then you became a fireman, and you are an actor and a filmmaker and a dad. Have, have, are there more things besides that that you do? Uh, activist, sometimes. A, an activist. <laughs> That's a very important one not to leave out. When I have time, yes. Uh, yeah, I became a New York State trooper first um, before 9-11, and I actually resigned from the New York State Police in the summer before September 11th uh, happened. And I reason re, reason why I resigned was because I was getting called for the medical and the physical for the New York City Fire Department, and I knew it was getting close to getting on the job. And I went back to my old job, MTA, Bridge and Tunnel Officer, and I was down there on 9-11, wow. helped clean up uh, for several days, and then I became a fireman at the end of October. Well, bless you. You're a true American hero. And, uh, and, and amongst all this, I understand that not only are you a parent, but you're an autism parent. That's correct, yes. My, uh, one of my sons, my older son, is in the spectrum, and uh, that's pretty much what inspired me to make the film Burning Down. And, and let's talk about this. This is a short film. I was saying yesterday feature length, but then, then I got to screen the film. It's about 31 minutes, correct, Chris? Correct, yes. And tell us what, uh, what the film is about. Uh, in short, it's about a New York City fireman, a good husband, a good father, has two children, and he learns that uh, one of them, the, the boy, is autistic. Um, he is in denial. He refuses to accept it, basically because he himself had a very tough childhood because he was born with a birth defect and disability, if you will, and his own father did not accept him because he was, you know, different. Yeah. So he has to do some soul searching and he ends up homeless. Uh, his wife won't, won't allow him to drink and uh, continue doing drugs and pretty much not being supportive of not being a dad and being there for his son. And uh, while he's homeless, he ends up uh, having a, I don't know if you call it a vision or a epiphany, but he basically realizes the reason, the root reason why he cannot accept his son being autistic, why he has a problem handling that is due to the same thing, like what I just said, is his dad couldn't accept him. So he searches for his father and uh, he gets some things off his chest, but he also has closure because he didn't understand his father's disease, being an alcoholic, um, and a lot of people don't. You're usually an enabler instead of uh, showing tough love. Um, so he uh, confronts his dad, and he finally gets things off his chest, and then he has that, you know, the monkey off his back, and now he's able to move forward and be there for his son in the end of the story. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, there are so many amazing things in the film, um, but, but certainly, we, we talk about it a lot on this show, we don't get to hear enough from the dads. Uh, there, there, there is this, I don't, preconceived notion that when the, people talk about autism, they talk about the autism moms, and it's a place where a lot of women have found their inner superhero and have become warriors, and it seems like that gets a lot of the publicity, and for whatever reason, we don't, we don't hear enough from the dads, and we don't hear enough from the dad experience, and, and how difficult it can be to come to terms with the diagnosis, and I think that your film goes a long way to showing what the inner turmoil could look like for at least one dad. And I think that there are probably many dads that could relate to the story that's in the film. Um, sure. Have you got, I know that the film has not been seen widely yet and you've got a screening coming up. Tell us about that. But I'm wondering of the dads that have seen it, have it what kind of feedback you've gotten from them? Well, we, uh, the screening is May 13th. It's a private screening um, in Tribeca screening room, New York City. Um, it's only uh, cast and crew, and uh, we invited Autism Speaks members that are with Autism Speaks, as well as Smile Train, because those two, two organizations have given us their support. I told them about the project a, a few years ago when it was in development, and they love it, they love the idea, and the next step that we're going to do is hold a 
private screening slash fundraiser. And I have a list of celebrities, uh, whether it's actors, musicians, news reporters, journalists. I have a whole slew that I've researched, basically people that are involved, that support, that have donated or have a relative that is in the spectrum or have a birth defect disability such as a cleft lip, cleft palate. So that my goal is to raise the funds for 50% of the funds will go to one organization, the other 50% will go to the other one, as well as get these people, um, you know, that are prominent in the industry to see the film, yeah. see the quality of work we did on a very, very low budget, um, the passion we put into it, the great storytelling, the great writing, and it's just relevant to today because autism is so such a big topic. And just to touch upon uh, what you said about dads not being really in the limelight, the forefront, so to speak. Obviously, I think one of the reasons is you have so many deadbeat dads. And unfortunately, I think dads are not that there aren't mothers out there that aren't deadbeat moms. But I just think there are more dads out there that are more likely to stray from the home, from their children. Um, and the mothers more likely to stay with their child also get the rights to, you know, have their child with them 24-7 and then, you know, give the dad some rights to see them. Um, basically, I, I think that's one of the reasons. Um, and another reason is I, I do know a lot of autistic moms that are single because of the situation, like I said, examples that I just gave of uh, husbands who weren't supportive, who maybe had addiction problems, who were womanizers or what have you for a variety of reasons. And I think uh, they are the strongest advocates for their children, I believe. And wow. obviously they, they're the ones that carry yeah. the child for nine months and go through the labor. Yeah. So yeah, I we're, can understand we're closer well. to home, so to speak, when it, yeah. when it happens. Yeah.